Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com, and in this video I'll be giving you a quick introduction to the Rhino 6 for Mac user interface. When you first start Rhino, you'll have four default viewports. To tumble the perspective view, use the right mouse button and click and drag. If you hold down Shift and right mouse button, you'll pan, and the Command and right mouse button will zoom in and out. The orthographic views of top, front, and right will pan with right mouse button, click and drag, and will zoom in the same way with command key held down and right mouse button. To minimize or maximize a viewport, you can double click its name tab, or you can use the icons above the viewport area. Each of the viewports has a right click menu over its name tab with additional settings, such as setting the view or the C-plane for that viewport. You can also change the display mode per viewport. On the left side of the interface, you'll see the left sidebar, which can be hidden and shown with this icon. The top section contains tool palettes. If you click and hold on an icon, you'll see a flyout with related commands. When choosing an icon or running a command, You'll see settings and options for that command in the command dialog. Rhino also lets you type, and the letters that you type directly appear in the command line. The more letters you type, the shorter the autocomplete list gets for the possible commands you could run. The lower section of the left sidebar contains object snaps, or O snaps for short. For instance, if I have end enabled, I can reference existing points for making new geometry. At the top of the interface, you'll see grid snap, which allows you to snap to the construction plane in any viewport, ortho and planar, which control how you move or create geometry, smart track, which uses O snaps and allows you to reference locations. You'll see these lines appear. These are the smart track lines. And the gumball, which is a manipulator object that will appear when you have a selection and gumball is enabled. The gumball allows you to translate with the arrows, rotate with the arcs, or scale with these box icons. You can also create geometry in some cases. On the right side of the screen, you'll see the right sidebar, which has a matching icon for hiding and showing it. The top section is called the Properties panel. If nothing is selected, you'll get information about that particular viewport. If an object is selected, you'll get information about that object, and you'll have icons for its properties. The lower section of the right sidebar contains what are called Inspector Panels, and these will be features such as layers or display mode options. If you click the gear drop down menu, you can see the list of other panels you can hide and show in this docked section. If you'd like panels to be floating instead, you can use the drop down window menu and then floating panels flyout. Likewise, you can choose the active tool palettes flyout to have floating tool palettes rather than having them docked in the left sidebar. For Rhino's options, you can use command comma to bring up your preferences. Here you'll have global options that will persist between Rhino sessions. This can be things such as display mode settings, or how colors and icons are displayed, for document-specific settings, use the File menu and then Settings. Anything you change here will be saved in the 3DM file you're working on. These settings would include things such as the unit of measurement used in the file, or the density of the render mesh, which is how you display any shaded object. And that's a quick overview of the Rhino 6 for Mac user interface. Thanks for watching.